Hi, I'm Rabbi Yisrael Bornath, and welcome to Kabbalah for Everyone. Today, I want to talk about if it's possible for us to overcome our animal nature. You see, the animal soul is the source of all our negative personality traits. I'm angry. I'm angry because someone bruised my ego. I'm jealous because my ego is threatened. I even love because of my own ego. In such circumstances, even the love that we express towards others can bounce back at us like a boomerang and they seek vengeance against us. Why? Because we really acted out of self-love. It wasn't really love for someone else. We were thinking about what we could get out of the relationship, not out of the true care and the concern for the other person. And eventually that fraud is revealed. You see, if we're going to be focused on what we can get from the relationship, it's not really a relationship. If it's all about what can you do for me, what's in it for me, then you might as well be in a relationship with yourself. You might as well be connected to yourself. I mean, I'm sure it's going to happen eventually that someone's going to ask me if I can marry them to themselves. Because if it's that connected to me and to the I, then eventually there's going to be no room for anyone else. Or maybe there already is no room for anyone else. So we can safely assume that every reasonable person who wants to grow has a desire to break free from the animal soul or from the animalistic cycle. The animalistic cycle lies at the heart of all of our problems. The animal soul is responsible for the blockages, for the interference that we encounter in everything that we do. Its self-interest is simply that it won't let go. It won't let us pr progress spiritually in our life. But the good news is that though we focused in our last episode and now today until this point on the animal soul and the animal soul is so much part of who we are and it makes so much sense to us that we have this animalistic, this selfish, this desire, this soul within us that just wants for itself, that just wants to be who it wants to be. It wants to eat. It wants to sleep. It wants to enjoy the pleasures of the world. And maybe we're, it's so embedded in us that we can't even see without it. When we ask, can we overcome our animal nature? I don't know. Can I overcome my animal nature? Is there a part of me that rises above me? Is there an altruistic part of me? We asked that question last time. I wonder what you came up with. But today I wanna to go into the next part of who we are. The second soul, the godly soul. Without our godly soul, we would be hopeless. Our entire life would be focused on our ego. So the fact that we have a godly soul, it changes the picture. Now, we said that when we're born, we have an animal soul. But when God breathed into Adam a breath of life, that breath of life was the godly soul, or was also the godly soul. There were two souls. There was the animal soul and there was the godly soul. There was also different levels of the soul. We'll get into that at a different time as far as which level of the soul is associated with which of these souls. But generally in these, there are, there's the animal, there's the instinctual soul, and then there's the godly soul, which is chelik elaka mimal mamish, as it says, it's a piece of God on high. It's an actual piece of God that God blew within Adam, within each and every one of us, within our souls, a breath of life. Now that breath 
of life that God, that God blew with an atom. It's just kind of a glimmer, a spark when we're born. And as we develop through infancy and then toddler and then childhood, that godly spark develops within us, which means in the beginning, it's mostly animal and a little bit of godly. And then slowly the godly soul develops. And actually, maybe if you wonder this, what is the point of bar and bat mitzvah? Why are we celebrating the age of 13 or the age of 12? We're celebrating this bar mitzvah. I think often today it's more bar than it is mitzvah. But why are we celebrating it? We're celebrating it because at the age of 13 for a boy and at the age of 12 for a girl, the godly soul within us becomes complete, which means at that point, we truly have free choice. If we're majority animal with a little bit of godly, we don't really have the free choice, which makes sense why a toddler is majority animal and very little godly, even though children have that beautiful godly spark, the innocence, the purity. But in general, about making choices and decisions, we're primarily animal and a little bit of godly. And then you can see the child developing and kind of understanding what's going on in the world and trying to differentiate. And as they enter that adolescence, it starts becoming more and more present. And that is exactly when the godly soul becomes complete. So now, not only is the child responsible for their actions, but the child also has the ability to differentiate between good and bad, where often maybe as before the parents had to make that choice. Now the child can make the choice for themselves. So when we celebrate the bar and bat mitzvah, we're saying to the child, you now have choice. Not that, you know, there's a, oh, you're now an adult according to Jewish law. Ha, ha, ha. You know, you're 13 years old and you're an adult. I'm not sure about that. But we definitely have the ability to differentiate. And now we can have an adult conversation with you and we can teach you what our values, what our morals, what's important in our lives. I've had the great opportunity to, to spend time with young men and women as they're coming to this age. And it's so interesting when we start talking about what are your non-negotiables. And very often when I teach the Bar and Bat Mitzvah lessons, I want to make sure to talk about those non-negotiables. Because I think that at a, there's a point in a child's life where they have to say, what do I stand for? What's, this is my non-negotiable and this is what's important for me. And I know that you're saying, well, that's, that's a lot to figure out when you're 13. Yes, but when are you going to start having that conversation? When you're 20, I think maybe you've missed the boat. 13, they're still young enough to be impressionable, but old enough to have a real conversation. And I think that is what's beautiful about that age and the value of that age is really the ability to have that adult conversation. And this is the emergence we can see back to this idea that we can see the emergence of the godly soul within this child, within this adolescent, within the young adult. Now, every single one of us has the godly soul. And again, it's literally part of God. It's, it's a real piece of God that comes into this world that's embedded within us. And this soul is selfless. It desires only to be connected to its source, to God. The example that the Kabbalists give is, is the, the, the candle and the wick and, and the, the flame, that the candle is this world and the wick is the body, or, or maybe even to a certain extent, the animal soul, but we'll call it the body and that flame is the godly soul. It's constantly rising higher, but connected to this world by the wick keeping it down, but wanting more, wanting to rise higher, wanting more out of life, that every time we have a desire, like what's going on in my life, I want more out of life, that desire is coming from the godly soul, from that altruistic part of us that says, this is not good enough, I want more. 
I demand more out of who I am. It's not all about eating and drinking and enjoying. It can't just be about that. There needs to be something greater. There needs to be purpose. There needs to be meaning. And that desire for purpose and meaning, that's that spark, that spark of God within us. The way that these two souls behave within us, I think, again, to use that analogy of the candle, where there's two parts of the candle, right? The wax and then the flame. So the, the flame that's surging upwards towards its source, that supernal source, which is why flames are always going to reach upwards, regardless of how the candle is held, right? If you turn the candle upside down, you're still going to get the flame reaching upwards. The flame wants to rise. And it's willing, think about this for a moment, it's willing to give up its very existence for the ability to rise higher. And at the same time, the wax drips downward. I think you can see this example again of the candle within the two souls. The godly soul, it's longing for a deeper connection with God, for a deeper connection with a creator. And the animal soul, the animal soul pulls us downward. It pulls us towards a single-minded interest. It wants to enjoy the pleasures of this world. And so we have now two souls, the animal soul, the instinct, and the godly soul, the peace of God that's within us, that desire to rise higher, to want more to try to find meaning and purpose in this world, like the flame rising higher from the candle. And those are my thoughts for today. Don't worry, we'll be back. We have a lot more to talk about. I'm Rabbi Yisrael Bernath. Have a great day.